So we know that chromosome 1 changes are very common in myeloma and they affect 40% of newly diagnosed patients. They increase at relapse um, and there's two, broadly two types of events, deletion of 1P and gain of 1Q. And what we did in order to understand what was driving the disease, why these patients did badly, uh, we had a look at both the DNA of these patients, the methylation aspects and RNA, so expression, in order to uh, get the different layers of information and try and identify potential driver genes. What we actually saw was there were broadly two types of gain 1Q. There were patients that would gain the whole arm of, um, of chromosome uh, 1Q, which was associated uh, with having an open chromatin, so it was a very active chromatin. And these patients usually had other deleterious events, such as T414, uh, loss of acrocentric chromosome. And we hypothesized that these patients uh, generated that 1Q through what we call a jumping translocation. And the consequence of having that event was a deregulation of metabolism, of uh, growth, and of different signaling pathways which, in, which led to a treatment resistance and a bad outcome. On the other uh, end of the spectrum, we had a third of patients that only had focal gains of chromosome 1. And these patients surprisingly did quite well. And when we looked into closer details, we saw that these patients actually only gained small fragments. They were associated with a mechanism called templated insertion and suggested that they were generated in a different path, a different mechanism and uh, only deregulated a handful of genes and mainly in the protein handling pathway which are all actionable by current treatment, explaining why these patients didn't have a bad outcome. And so I think by dissecting uh, the different events we find in chromosome one, we're able to pinpoint and guide uh, and be able to guide in the future on different strategies for this high risk group of patients for, for which uh, urgent new therapeutics are needed.